now I'm going to briefly answer the second question, or I'll try and answer it. Um, it's a very interesting one. Uh, the question was, I read about virtual and physical threads. What's the difference between them? What is the hardware there? Uh, there can be no more threads than course. So I'm a bit confused about the possibility of virtual ones. So I just want to um, to take a step back. Uh, threads are really a software con or threads and processes. Hopefully you'll, you'll understand that they're slight, technically slightly different in terms of how they, they share memory with each other. But they're they're effectively mini programs, but they're a software concept. And modern operating systems are built to run hundreds, thousands of, of processes and threads at, at any one time. If you look at you look at your task manager or, or whatever your process manager is on your on your laptop or your desktop, you will see it is probably running hundreds of, of individual processes or threads, which is many more than is supported by the hardware in a multi-core system. You might have uh, four CPU cores on your laptop. However, any one time, it's the operating system's job to, th to schedule a certain number of those processes or threads onto the hardware. So at any one time, if you had four CPU cores, you would think that at any one time, my computer could be running four separate uh, physical threads at the same time. So I don't quite know what the um, what the uh, the person who asked the question meant by virtual and physical threads, but I assume it meant the virtual threads are I would think of as being the the software ones. You you want to run a hundred or a thousand threads or processes at once, but physically you only have four CPU cores, so at any one time only four of them are running. However, there is a slight complication here which comes in through something called um, simultaneous multi-threading or hyper-threading that modern CPU cores can actually often in hardware run more than one thread at once. The difference is that in software, if the operating system says, oh, that CPU core is running a thread, or I'd like to switch to another processor or a thread, that's quite a heavyweight operation. You have to stop the thread, take it away make sure all its state is saved and all the memory is safe and then move on the new one. It can take a lot of time to do that. And so switching threads, switching processes and threads on and off physical CPU cores isn't done very rapidly. It's done maybe every hundredth of a second, which, which, is, a, which is a long time compared to the nanoseconds at which a, a modern processor is running. However, what we mean by something like hyper-threading or simultaneous multi-threading is that a single CPU core can switch between up maybe two threads very quickly. And so on a modern, um, especially an Intel uh, processor, you'd expect to have maybe four CPU cores, each of which could have to have up to two hyper threads. And what it means is it can be running two threads at once. Why that's advantageous is you might be running one thread and that thread might request memory might want to read data from memory. Now we talked about beforehand that reading data from memory can be very, very slow. So that might block for a long time while the, while the data is, is transferred from the memory system and the CPU core is doing nothing. Well, with hyper-threading, the idea is that it can say, well, that I can run up to, you can only run a limited number of threads at once, but say two, but it can say, well, that, that particular thread is blocked waiting on memory, but what I'll do is I'll run another thread. And if it's doing something different, i.e. not waiting on memory doing a, a, a numerical calculation, maybe it can, it can then start running. So, so there are two concepts here. I, I'm interpreting vis virtual threads as being um, the number of um, uh, threads or processes which are running as a user at once, which can be in the hundreds or thousands. The operating system then schedules them onto the physical CPU cores. But an individual CPU core on a modern processor can run maybe two threads at once, and this is often called hyper-threading, and it can switch between them on a cycle-by-cycle -cycle level. Maybe it'll take a nanosecond or two to go between two, two threads on the chip, whereas where for the operating system to, to switch out a processor or a thread and switch in a new one might take you know thousands and thousands of nanoseconds, thousands of cycles. Will there be a second course? Well, I, we've made a deliberate choice on this course that there would be no programming. Um, that was to allow it to be generally accessible. I believe that almost all the concepts can be can be explained at a conceptual level. And also, once you bring in programming, there's a lot more hardware requirements on people to have their own machine, and it makes it a lot more complicated. Um, there is an intermediate level where we don't have a course where we don't require people to write programs, we give them programs to run, but then that's difficult because we have to provide people hardware to run it on again. So we don't have immediate plans for there to be a second course um, from um, from EPCC, from the University of Edinburgh. Uh, Price is planning more MOOC courses, and um, so I don't know... Um, we haven't decided what areas they will be in, but the, currently there's the data science and the supercomputing MOOC up under the price, uh, uh, under the price uh, 
brand. There will be more MOOCs coming up in the next year or so, and I don't know what subject areas they may be. They may be more technical ones about supercomputing. Us ourselves probably won't be doing something for another year or so. We'll run this, rerun this one a few times and then come back with a new one. So I'm sorry I can't give you a definitive answer, but I'm, I'm very pleased to know that you enjoyed the course so much that you, you're asking for more.